Hello, in the following video we are going to be covering how to create a Shopify function. For this example, we will use the car validation API and the example we will be seeing is how to create a function that validates that the user is not ordering more of a product than what we intend them to. This could be useful in examples where we have a limited inventory of a product and we don't want scalpers to take them out for themselves. So the first thing we are going to do is to run npm init shopify app latest then we're going to give my first app as the name and we are going to select the start by adding your first extension template this will create an app which is required for creating a function and we will be using this new extension template which doesn't add a lot of the files that were previously required for the app like a ui as functions don't really take advantage of that so we are going to be waiting for this command to complete which should do shortly here we go and then i'm going to be taking all these files and moving them out of here placing them this root in the this folder and then on my other console I'm going to be running npm run Shopify app generate extension. As you as you know, a function is extension, so we are going to create it as a new app. We're going to link it as a, new, as a new app. It will be linked to the app in this directory, like for app, as I just did. And then here we are going to find card and checkout validation function. We are going to leave the name as is, and we are going to pick JavaScript. Also, if you wanted to, you could also pick TypeScript, which could be really useful as the typings of these functions. You may not be really familiar with them. Anyways, let's generate this. And while we are at that, let's see the into extensions. And let's see the into car checkout validation. So we're going to need to be into the two of them. Okay, so we are done installing the dependencies for our project. And the next thing that we're going to do is from the root of our directory, we're going to run npm run deploy dash 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 no release. We have to run this the first time that we create our function. And then we're going to create a new version of our app. And our app contains our extension, which in turn contains our function, as you can see in the hierarchy here. And then we're going to run npm run Shopify app complete push. We have to run this whenever we change the configuration of our app of or of our extension. So whenever this file or this file changes, we should run that command. And now let's get familiar with the files that were generated for our extension. So the first one that we care about is input.graphql. And to understand better this file, we will have here a schema.graphql open. So here we are querying the card, which in turn gets the lines property of it, and then gets the quantity property of it. And how do we know the name of these properties or that the card is even a valid thing here? We get that by checking this schema of GraphQL, which has all the things that we can query and all the properties of those things. So for example, if we wanted to get the properties that the card line has, we will do type card line. And here you can see that we can query the ID, the cost, the merchandise, and the quantity as we are doing here. And what will happen if you try to query something that is not valid, valid like title? Well, as we run this, and then if from the root we want to appear on that, it will try to start a development server for our app. But you can see that it failed because title is not valid for Caroline. But if I remove this and try to run the command again, you can see that it is building and it works fine. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to be doing is to go to our store and from the settings menu, 
we are going to go to custom data and we are be going to create a meta field that will have the amount of this product that can be placed in the same order so i'm going to put as the name nice amount and for the value we're going to pick an integer we're going to enable it for the storefront and the minimum value will be one so we're going to save this and now under products we're going to pick this one and we are going to put two for example so if the user tries to order more than two of this product in the same order they will get an error once we have our function completely set up which we will do next okay so the next thing that we need to do is to update this input and graphql query to get the data that we need for our function so i'm going to keep this like that and start adding the other attributes we need so aside from the quantity we also need the product itself so this is under merchandise and then on product variants we are going to get the handle and we are going to get the max orders which is a meta field with the namespace custom and the key max order and then we get the value this custom and this max order are values that we got when we were creating our meta field so we get that over here, <clears throat> over here going to custom data product max amount and you can see custom does that max amount let me copy this i had a typo here so it's good that i just checked and it seems like i'm also having an error because i cannot query handle nor max orders for product variant and that's right this is because for the product variant i need to get the product and then i can query those two properties so we can see here that this worked and now i have to run from my functions folder i'm going to run npm run type gen what this does is that it generates typings for this query as even though i'm using javascript shopify generates the typings as you can as you can see over here at least for the input and for the output so we at least have that little help while creating our function so now let's create the body of our function okay so let's delete all of this and now let's create an array of errors and we're going to return the errors and now let's look through the input the card the line items and let's do a for each what we do we get the card item the line item and then from this we get the quantity and we get the merchandise and now let's get the value for the max amount it can be undefined so we have we have to while working on this make sure that it is defined merchandise and we do optional chaining here product max orders the value and as you can see here this is why i suggested that if you are comfortable with typescript go ahead and use it because even though this function is sort of type here it says that product is not a property of merchandise and that is because merchandise as we can see here it is a union of custom product and a product variant so yes um i don't think it maps easily to javascript and that's why this happens but this does contains the value that we need so now i do if max and quantity is greater than max then we are going to do errors that push and do we do the localized 
message, which in this case, I'm just going to put the English message here. And the target will be the card. So here, let's write an error like, can't order more than, uh, let's get this whole value of merchandise, the product, the handle. Let's do this, just in case. And if you ask why are we using the handle instead of the title, that is because if you go to the product type, you can see that it doesn't have a title property. I'm not sure why is that, but the closest thing that we have to the product name will be the handle, which is a human friendly string, the product title. And the handle will basically look something like this. So if the name of a product is green skateboard, the handle will be green skateboard. We can then do some transforming to this, like removing the the hyphen in between the word, and that will sort of help. Also, it doesn't always match us to that. But anyways, let's go now to the settings. Let's go to checkout. And to enable our function, we go to right. Before doing that, we have to install our app. So first, let's click on this link over here. Let's open it. And let's turn this on. This is because we're working in a development store. This is basically hot reloading for our extension. And then this link over here, let's copy all of this. This will install our application in our store. So now, if we go to checkout, and we have here the checkout rules, we can add the checkout validation from our app to the rules, and over here, we can enable it. So now, let's go to our store. Let's review it. And now, let me try to place two of these items in the cart. I go to my cart, I go to checkout, and you see that nothing happens. That's fine, because I said that the max amount was two. But now, if I set this to three, we see that nothing happens. And why is that? Well, let's go to our function. Let's debug this, and we see that the, there was an error in our output. Let's see why that is. Okay, I just figured what the error was. Basically, here, and I had, I should have noticed that this was throwing an error over here. But basically, we need to return errors as a key here. So I save this. And now, if I go to my function and I refresh this, we can see that we can order more than two of the 3P fulfilled snowboard, which is this item. And if we go to the logs over here, we see that our function was run successfully. Also, something to keep in mind is that if you are running this function, and, or maybe you're running a more complex one, and you're having um, some sort of logic errors in there, you may want to debug using console.log, which is an easy way of debugging. But, you, you can see that if I save this, and then I go to the checkout over here, the function is run, but that message, this hello, is not here. And the reason of that is because the logs don't appear there. They appear here in the dashboard. So you will have to keep a close eye on this. So on the last run of my function, if I go to see details, here I can say, I can see my log message. So that would basically be it. This is how you create a function in Shopify. We saw here also how to enable it, how to debug it. And let me know in the comments if you have any more questions about this.
in the future, I'm going to be doing some other type of functions, like, for example, a function to create a bundle, because I was trying that out the other day, and it has a bit of a different approach than the one that we use to create this one. So it would be interesting to see that into a video. Anyways, I will make this one longer. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.